you have kingdom authority vested in you the powers of darkness cannot hold you back or pin you down the forces of the enemy cannot restrain you or contain you the greater one is in you god's power through you is more than what the devil can handle advance boldly to take new ground to extend god's kingdom happy new year to all of you God bless you in 2019. All right, so what we normally do in some time in October, November of the year is as we start looking ahead for 2019, we start listening to the Lord, saying, "God, what are you telling us for the next year?" And like I meant like we mentioned every time, and we've been doing this for I mean since the time we started, uh when we give the word of the Lord, it's not the only words. right so don't say this is the only thing god spoke to me <laughs> no uh we live by the entirety of scripture we live by the written word of god first of all so the whole bible applies for all of 2019 right uh but what we do is say god give us something very specific that we know uh, you're going to work in our lives as a church that you are telling us as a body and uh, then we bring that particular message as the word of the lord and that becomes an emphasis to the course of the year uh we expect it to be fulfilled in our lives as a church and as a people uh but of course to each one of you personally god will be speaking much more god will be speaking additional things uh, uh god will be continue to speak to us through the written word of god all right so with that background i just want to bring to us the word of the lord for 2019 what i feel the lord is speaking to us two important words that God is speaking to us as a church for 2019 God is saying to you and me at once boldly at once boldly so let's all say this together in 2019 let's say together in 2019 in 2019 I advance boldly. I advance boldly to take new ground. Take new ground to extend God's kingdom. To extend God's kingdom. So the word of the Lord for 2019 is advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. So let's say it again. In 2019 2019 I advance boldly I advance boldly to take new ground to take new ground to extend God's kingdom to extend God's kingdom Amen Amen And I believe God will do this in each of our lives that you will see God empower you to advance boldly to take new ground to extend his kingdom, kingdom. Amen God bless you. you may be seated Oh really 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 sorry 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 <laughs> This light change in plans worship team will lead us in a song this was written by one of Anand Harris and the team here uh many years ago we're going to bring it sing it so go ahead please Rising church that wants to spread your name to the ends of the earth A Rising people who want to see their city share your love Let's sing it A Rising church that wants to spread your name to the ends of the earth A Rising people who want to see their city share your love Every time we sing your name Yeah. 
together we will give you praise lift your name lord and every time we sing your name the name that is higher together we will give you praise come on let's sing his name Thank you. So in 2019, we will advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. You have kingdom, power, and authority vested in you. The powers of darkness cannot hold you back or pin you down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain you or contain you. The greater one is in you. God's power through you is more than what the devil can handle. Amen? So there's no reason why you and I should sit down and do nothing. We've got to get up and advance. Amen? God's power through you is more than what the devil can handle. So advance boldly. The verses of scripture we're going to look at is Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Matthew 16, 18 and 19. And these are familiar verses for many of us. Jesus speaking to Peter, he says, And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now we, we understand the context here. Jesus has been with his disciples for some time. And you know, you, you've been around Jesus. And then one day he suddenly turns around and he asks you, Who do men say that I am? I mean, what's on the news? What's the news about me? And, you know, his disciples say, well, on the news, CNN is saying you're John the Baptist. <laughs> NBC is saying you're somebody else, you know. People are confused. They don't know who you are. Some say you're this, some say that you're that. And then Jesus turns around to his disciples and he asks them this pointed question. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? It's really important to know someone you're just giving your whole life for. You better know whom, who he is. Whom do you say that I am? And Peter, under revelation from the Father, Peter sp speaks out. He says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus responds and says, Peter, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Now it's an interesting play on words over there. For the word 
Peter, the Greek, and in the Greek, it's an interesting play of words. The word for Peter is Petros, which simply means a piece of a rock. So it's not the big rock. It's a piece of it. So you are a piece of rock. But upon this Petra, Petra means the big one, the big rock, the solid rock. You are Petros, you are a piece of rock. But upon this Petra, what was the Petra? The thing that you just said. The revelation he just spoke, given to you by the Father. This truth that you just spoke, that this man, this Jesus, is the Christ. The Son of the living God. On this revelation, on this truth, on this Petra, on this big unshakable rock, I will build my church. The church is built on an unshakable foundation. Time can come and go. Armies can come and go. The devils can come and go. The church will not be shaken. Because it is built on Petra. It is built on Christ who is the unshakable eternal rock of ages. You can't blast it out. You can't push it down. You can't chisel through it. You can't dynamite it. This is Petra, the rock, the eternal rock. That Christ is the son of the living God. Nobody can alter that. And on that rock, he said, I will build my church. So you and I are that church that Jesus Christ is building. But then what kind of a church is Jesus building? He's not just building people who would come and sing some nice songs on Sunday morning, listen to some sermons and go home. That's not the kind of people he's building. Now that's part of what we do uh, as part of our Christian journey. And there's nothing wrong with that. We come to worship God together. That's important. That's part of what we're taught in scripture. We come to learn the word of God. We come to be equipped. But what kind of a church Jesus is building? Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So there is something about this church that has to do with the gates of hell. The church that Jesus Christ is building is a church that is confrontational. It is not a church that is sitting inside a nice building making themselves feel safe. No, no, no. He said, I will build my church. And the church I build is a church that's poised to go towards the gates of hell hell. See, as a church, we have only one direction. Many of us say, as a church, our destination is heaven. Wait a minute. Before that, your first destination are the gates of hell. Don't seem happy about it. (laughs) Because he said, I will build my church and take them to heaven. No. No. I will build my church and they will go to the gates of hell. That's what he said. But let's understand what he's saying. I will build my church and the gates of hell. Now, implied in what he's saying is that the church goes to the gates. See, the gates don't come to us. We go to the gates. Amen? The gates are fixed. The gates are stationary. If you want to go to the gates of your apartment complex or uh, the house you live in, the gates don't come to your bedside. you got to roll out of bed and go to the gates. So he's saying, I'm building a church, and this church is a church that advances to the Gates of hell. Now what are the gates of hell? In Bible times, the cities had gates. So people understood the terminology that Jesus was using when he talked about the gates of hell. Cities had gates. And it was at the city gates that the elders of the city sat to dispense justice. It was at the city gates that the elders of the city sat to decide who comes in and who goes out. So really the gates of a city represented the control center. Are you with me? 
So when Jesus said the gates of hell, he's talking about areas on this world, areas of demonic domination. He's talking about the control centers, those places where the devil has power. So the first destination for the church is not heaven. The first destination is every power center on earth. Go, that's your job. Are you with me? The church that Jesus is building is a church that says, where are the gates of hell? Where are the areas of demonic domination in my city, in my community, in my place of work? Where are those areas? Where are those gates? That's my destination. That's where I'm supposed to go. So Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell, those power centers of hell, those areas of concentrated activity of demons, those are the places my church will go to. And here's what I'm saying. Those gates will not be able to stop the advancing church. They will not be able to stop it. They will not be able to prevail against the church that Jesus is building. Amen. So that's our assignment here on earth. Why are we the church? So that we go to the gates of hell. And he says, they will not prevail against you. You're going to go to those places where there are demonic activity, areas of demonic domination. And you're going to undo what the devil's doing. You're going to dismiss the enemy. You're going to disperse them. You're going to take over those areas of demonic domination. And in order for you to do that, here's what Jesus said. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven to the church he's saying i'm giving you the keys keys represent authority in scripture keys represent two things one keys represent authority two keys represent wisdom and knowledge so he says i'm giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven i'm giving you the authority of the kingdom of heaven the authority of God's kingdom is wasted in the church, is wasted in you. People, some, I think many of us don't even understand the kind of people Jesus wants us to be and what he has vested in us. But he's saying, look, I have put in you as my people the authority of my kingdom here on earth. I wasted that in you. So instead of us just coming to feel nice together, we got to be looking out. Where are the gates of hell? I'm coming there. Because there's authority vested in me. There's authority vested in you. And what do we do? He said, what you bind. Who binds? You, the church. What you bind on earth. Heaven will bind it. What you lose on earth, heaven will back it up. Heaven will release it on earth. I mean, that's the kind of authority Jesus has vested in the church. Amen? So let's say this together as we make our declaration. I mean, I'm going to, or we are going to intentionally repeat this over and over to the course of the year so we don't forget it. Let's say this together. I advance boldly to take new ground to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power. An authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. Amen. That's who you are. That's the church. Amen. So I want to bring to us four instructions on how to advance boldly. Now I'll be quick with this so you can go home. We can all go home and sleep. <laughs> Not used to preaching in a jacket. It's already so hot here. <laughs> it's like once a year. You have to endure the suffering. 
It's okay. It's only one seed. Okay. All right. <clears throat> How do we advance boldly? Four instructions. Number one, identify your territory. Identify your territory. What is your territory? Don't copy your neighbors. God's assignment for their life may be different from yours. You have to identify your territory. What territory does God want you to conquer in 2019? And I'm just using a couple of references for each of these points here. In Genesis 13, verses 14 and 15, God speaks to Abraham. You know, God has, Abra God has called Abraham to advance boldly so we can learn from his life. God And the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Thank you so much. So everybody say this, look from the place where you are. Now you need to look, don't fall asleep, right? <laughs> look from the place where you are. So you know, you may ask, what territory does God want me to conquer? Well, look from where you are. Where are you today? If you're a student, look. There are students around you. If you're in college, look. The whole college campus is around you. Maybe that's your territory. If you're a working professional, look. There are colleagues in your workplace. Maybe that's your territory. Look from the place where you are. Identify your territory. Ask God to speak to you. God, what is the territory you want me to conquer for the, to extend your kingdom? Where do you want me to advance boldly so that I could be somebody through whom God's kingdom will advance? Look from the place where you are. And what did God say? Everything that you see, he tells Abraham in, in those verses, all the land which you see, I'll give you and your descendants. So whatever you see, I'll give you. It'll become your possession. So look from the place where you are. It could be one, on, one of those areas on the seven mountains. We talk about it and it's been around since 75. People have been talking about seven mountains so we can use that language in one of these seven spheres of society, maybe God has positioned you in one of those spheres. And, and, and God wants you to advance his kingdom in one or more of those spheres. So look from where you are. Is it on the mountain of religion, family? Some of you are counselors, and, and your territory is a family. You've got to see families heal. You've got to undo what the devil's doing in destroying families, in destroying marriages. Some of us are in the, uh, on the mountain of business, and, and there's an area in, in business. Uh, there are many areas where uh, the enemy has dominated, and God has something assigned for you on that mountain. It could be in arts and entertainment. It could be in media. It could be in education. It could be in, in government. These are just spheres of, of society. And in all of these spheres, there are those gates of hell that you and I need to advance to. You're with me so far? So identify your territory. Know the territory God has appointed for you to conquer. What are the areas of demonic domination that God wants you to conquer for his kingdom? Number two, position yourself in faith. In order to advance boldly, remember it's a walk of faith. When you go to the gates of hell, you got to go in faith. Got to go boldly. Don't try to sneak up behind the devil, tap him and run away. That's not how the Christian works. That's not the kind of church Jesus is building. No. When you and I advance to the gates of hell, we've got to go well-armed, bold, fearless, courageous people. So position yourself in faith for your assignment. Get ready on the inside. Be strong in your inner man. This is a spiritual battle. So build yourself up on the inside. Get rid of destiny blockers. You say, what do you mean by destiny blockers? You know, it's all the wrong things that the devil tries to put in our lives to rob us of what God's called us to do. Things like unbelief, disobedience, strife, rebellion, self, pride, 
uh, fleshly lusts, all these things are, are, are tools that the enemy uses to block us. When you are called to be a person who will go to the gates of hell, the enemy knows how to neutralize you or me. See, he tries to put these things in our lives. Neutralizes us. So instead of you doing damage to the devil, people are sitting far away from conquering. Blocked by one or more of these things. You know, in Hebrews 3 and 9, verse 19, we read about God's people. It says they could not enter in because of unbelief. That's just one of the many destiny blockers. Unbelief. They, they were scared. They didn't think God could do it. Unbelief kept them out of conquering a new territory. Position yourself in faith. See the invisible. Let's all say this together. See the invisible. You see, we got learned to dream. Thank God He's given us the capacity to dream. The, the, our imagination is a God-given ability. Because on the canvas of your imagination, you can paint the wildest dreams. And nobody can stop you. Except yourself. Amen. And on that canvas of your imagination, you can see the invisible. But seeing the invisible as an, is an important element of the life of faith. Now let's read a few verses there from Hebrews chapter 11 very quickly. Talking about the heroes of faith. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promises. So they were given the promise. They didn't receive it. But it tells us what they did. But having seen them. Everybody say, seen them. They, having seen them afar off, they were assured of them. They embraced them. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had, a, had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called a God for he has prepared a city for them. What are these scriptures telling us? God gave these people promises. You know what did they do with those promises? Four things this passage tells us. First it says they they saw the promises. Second, they were assured of the promises. Third, they embraced the promises. They confessed the promises. They did these things. And yet, they didn't receive the promise. But it wasn't, that didn't mean that they lost it. Because the Bible says, God prepared a city for them. And God is not ashamed to call them His own. They didn't receive it in their time. But they journeyed in this way. They saw the promise. God spoke it. They saw it. They were assured of it. I mean, they were just totally convinced about it. They embraced it. I mean, they gave themselves to it. And it says they confessed. They talked about it. They told everybody this is what it's going to be. But they didn't receive it in their lifetime. But God says, I'm not ashamed of them. I'm proud of the way they dealt with my promise. And I was preparing this message. I was reflecting back on different things that happened in my life. One of the things, one of the stories I'll share with you. When I was in engineering college, and Amy can testify to this. Uh, when I went to Manipal as a student, went out from here after finished my 12th standard Bangalore, went to Manipal. Uh, at that time, this was 1986. Some of you were not born. So. Pastor, I can't think that back. <laughs> uh, at that time, there was churches in Manipal, but there was no spirit-filled church. Nobody spoke in tongues. Nobody knew faith, healing, deliverance. They were new. That was the condition there of the students. But I, mean, I said, God, I've got to do something. I've got to do something in this place. And I was trying. I, I, I tried to get into some of those churches to try to say, share these things. No, not welcome. I remember one Bible study, I, I started a Bible study on, you know, uh, on the battle for the unsaved. And they actually told me, stop the Bible study, we can't handle it. So I had to leave. <laughs> I mean, that was the spiritual condition of whatever church there was in Manipal at that time. I remember the first person I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, shared with him, he took me to his uh, room. I still remember this so vividly. It was a Chinese guy, Malaysian Chinese guy, sat with him in his room, shared with him, he started praying in tongues. 
Then there was another guy who took me. We sat outside the church building. It was like 6 o'clock in the night or 7 o'clock. It was dark. This guy was, he had come from a background of drugs and music. I, I talked to him with the Holy Spirit, prayed with him. He started singing in tongues straight away. So slowly this began to take place. And I remember in my third year, I, 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 this was very special because it's exactly 30 years ago. January of 1989, I was praying in my room here, in my home here in Bangalore, getting ready to go back to college. It was my third year. And I remember the Lord saying, go to this hotel. That time it was, it was not a nice, very nice hotel. And tell them you want to rent the seminar hall every Saturday. Start a Bible study. So when I went back, I went to the front desk of that hotel. I said, uh, seminar hall, how much does it cost? So I want to rent it. Now, to honestly, I had no money. My monthly expense, I think in those, if I remember correctly, was only 800 rupees. This bill to rent the seminar hall for four weeks was 3,000 rupees. So even if I saved all the 800, I will not be able to pay. But I started. I said, please book it. I'm starting next Saturday. Started. There were hardly three or four of us. That's how it started. Then I started telling them, one day, this Bible study will have 200 students. This guy has gone wrong. There are not even 10 people sitting here. He is saying, one day, there will be 200 students. I remember those days, uh, it was hard work to carry my things. And you may not believe it, but those days, I did lead worship. Simply because there was nobody else. <laughs> I, by the time that worship finished, I was sweating. We made it. <laughs> but, you know, when you're starting, you have to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And I remember, slowly the numbers started increasing. And, and I found one young man. I said, God, next year, 1990, I'm going to graduate. I'm going to leave this place. So I need somebody to carry this work on, whom to find. And I remember, what, you know, there was Davis. He was in the medical college. Just coming, good boy, fresher. You know, let's, and I started talking to Davis. We would spend time every Saturday. We'll go eat our Chinese food and talk, talk. I said, Davis, one day this fellowship is going to grow to 200 people. Davis, you're going to take over. Next May, I'm graduating, but you get ready. You're going to take over. So, just, you know, whatever, that short time we had, put it all into him. In, 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 in May of 1990, when I left, uh, when I graduated and left Manipal, we were only about 30 students meeting. Like what we did here in a very simple way, I prayed over Davis. I said, Davis is going to continue this work. I left to the U.S., but I said, God, this work is in your hands. Two years from that time, there were 250 students worshiping God in that place. Amy can testify. And I got my wife from there. <laughs> but you know, here's the point. You've got to see the promises. You've got to be assured of the promises. I mean, it's got to be in you. Like, you're convinced about it. There's no second thoughts about it. You've got to embrace it. If you don't embrace it, you'll be half-hearted in what you're doing. There'll be some Saturdays you don't want to do it. But when you embrace it, you will do anything to get the job done. And you confess. You confess. You talk about it. People will not understand you. I think Fabi also knows the story. I think Fabi is somewhere. There. Okay. So, God has done it. And God wants to do it through your life. Through your life. But you got to position yourself in faith. You got to see the invisible. Like the uh, people of old. Always operate out of your identity in Christ. Who you are in God. You are complete in Him. You're anointed in Him. You're empowered in Him. You're enthroned in Him. Operate out of that identity. And, uh, and, and, and out of who you are in God. And who God is in you. Number three. Receive divine strategies. Number four. 
Receive divine strategies. Receive ideas from the Holy Spirit. God, you're saying advance boldly. This is the territory you want me to take. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm positioned myself in faith. How do I do it? God will give you the ideas. Amen. He will give you the ideas. One strategy, one key is all that's needed. Key also represents knowledge. Key also represents wisdom that unlocks. So one key, one idea will open the door. Amen. I remember how we started APC East. We were actually inside a hospital. And we had gone to visit one of our young people who were in the hospital. And in the hospital room, the Spirit of God put in my heart saying, with these young people, start APC East. And standing around that bed, I told these guys, I said, guys, we're going to go and start APC East. So you were not praying. No, I was not praying. We, were gone to, we had gone to visit somebody, who, one of our young people who was injured and was there. But God spoke there. And APC started. Brian was ready. Deepti were ready. And they took on the work. But one idea, one idea from God. It comes at the right time. It comes at the right place. You may not think it's the right place. But it is the right place for God. He speaks to you. Then you act on it and things happen. So receive ideas from the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, and I'll just read this passage quickly. Verses 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. It says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Sometimes the things God wants to do through you have no benchmarks. See, for those of us in industry, we know what is benchmarking, right? You look at the other products. Study it properly so that what you build is slightly better than that. But in the things God wants to do through you, there are times when there are uh, what eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what hasn't entered in the heart of man. I mean, you can't benchmark this with somebody else's ministry or with somebody else's work or with some other product. Because what eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what man has not imagined, those are some Sometimes those are the things that God is speaking to you and saying, go do this. And you're saying, God, but nobody's done this before. That's okay. That's the way God works. Are you with me? What eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what hasn't entered in the heart of man. Such things God has prepared for those who love him. But then what does God do? Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his so say this with me. God reveals them to me by His Spirit. See, God reveals them to you. It comes like a simple idea in your heart, in your mind. You wake up, maybe it comes in a dream. Maybe you wake up with this idea inside you. And it's saying, God, but I, there is no, nothing I can benchmark this against. Don't worry. What eyes haven't seen, what ears haven't heard, what hasn't entered in the heart of man. Such things God has prepared for those who love Him. And God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. Even the, for the Spirit says all things, even the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man who is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Why have you received the Holy Spirit? Why has God given you the Holy Spirit? One reason. That you might know the things that are freely given to you by God. Are you with me? So receive those ideas from God. And last step. Oh, let me just say this. Some of these strategies or ideas, there could be a variety of things. Sometimes it's prayer that's a strategy. It's a life influence that could be a strategy. God says just go there and work. That's all. Just be there and work. You will bring about change. That's the strategy. Sometimes it's a new initiative. God gives you an idea to start something new. Go do that. Sometimes you can establish the kingdom of God uh, through various ways like a Bible study, a seminar. Uh, you share Christian literature. It could be by demonstrating the supernatural. There are just innumerable ways, innumerable strategies that the Holy Spirit can give you. Lastly, 
you got to advance boldly and take possession. So, number one, identify your territory. Number two, position yourself in faith. Number three, receive God's idea. What is God telling you? How to go do this? And number four, you have to advance boldly and take position. Meaning, step out. This is a journey of faith. You've got to go do it. So get up and go out. So tell your neighbor, get up, go out. Tell the person on the other side, get up, go out. So God, that's what God told Abraham. Abraham, you've got to get up, you've got to go out. If you want to take possession, you've got to get up, you've got to go out. You can't sit down in your own same place and say, oh, I'm going to conquer territory. I'm going to go to the gates of hell. No, 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 no. You've got to get up and go out. You've got to go forward. Moses was in front of the Red Sea. Enemies at the back, Red Sea in front. Moses saying, God, what do I do? And God is saying, go forward. But God, there's a Red Sea in front of me. Moses, go. Go forward. And as he started walking, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has never entered in the heart of man, such things began to happen. Go forward. Don't sit down there. Step out. Go forward. And refuse compromise. Refuse compromise. Well, this is one way the enemy will hold us back or try to hold us back. He'll give you alternatives. Moses had to choose. He was raised up in the palace. But his destiny was to deliver the people. If he was going to fulfill that destiny, he had to give this up. If he held on to the riches of Egypt, he will not be able to enter in to the destiny. And he refused to compromise. Satan came to Jesus and he said, you know, Jesus, I'll give you a shortcut. All the kingdoms of this world, I'll hand it off to you. Just bow down and worship me. I'll make it easy for you. That was a dangerous compromise. Dangerous. And Jesus refused that. So the enemy would want us to compromise. You've got to refuse to compromise. Take possession by faith. Step in there. Begin to go. And occupy till he comes. In other words, stay there until he tells you it's enough. Occupy till he comes. Amen? So, let me just review and we'll close. The word of the Lord for 2019. Okay, just tell your neighbor it's time to wake up. <laughs> At least get this part. <laughs> it's enough. The word of the Lord for 2019. Advance boldly. Take new grounds to extend God's kingdom. Let's say this together. I advance boldly. To take new ground, to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. Amen. Four action items. Number one, identify your territory. Number two, position yourself in faith. Number three, receive divine strategies. Number four, advance boldly, take possession. Amen. God bless you. Let's stand to our feet. Let's pray together and we will dismiss. Thank you for your patience. I know this is... Uh, Service is a little longer than usual. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we could be here, God, assembled in your presence as we enter into 2019. And Father, by your Holy Spirit, I pray that each one of us here will be empowered to advance boldly in 2019, God. 
And we will take new grounds to extend your kingdom because we are kingdom people. We are sons and daughters of the king. God, in whatever sphere of influence you've positioned each one of us, in whatever area of calling and area of responsibility you've given to us, May we advance boldly to extend your kingdom in 2019. Empower each one by your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts and minds with divine strategies, God. Those things which eyes haven't seen, which ears haven't heard, which man has never even imagined. Release them to us, each one of us. Empower us, God, to position ourselves in faith and to move forward and take possession. Do this through each one of us, we pray. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good Tuesday, <laughs> a good January 1st, and a great week and a great year ahead. God bless you. You're dismissed. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org also visit our website abcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.